Young Turks now has audio, the TYT audio network, podcasts of some of your favorite shows and new shows, including one with Nina Turner, former Ohio State Senator. She's gonna do We the People with Nina Turner, talking about equality and justice and seeing that through the eyes of regular Americans who are affected by politics and policy. Everybody check it out at tyt.com slash audio. So Peter Navarro is the uh, president's advisor on trade, and there he is, looking really good. <laughs> he takes a good, a good tough guy picture. Feeling real tough about himself because he just uh, earlier this week said that there was a you know special place in hell for people like Justin Trudeau, the prime minister of Canada, who took a stance against Donald Trump and said that he would levy retaliatory tariffs against the United States. Peter Navarro has since apologized. He said, quote, my job was to send a signal of strength in conveying that message. I used language that was inappropriate and basically lost the power of that message. Um, he continued as uh, Wall Street Journal CFO Journal reports, in conveying that message, I used language that was inappropriate and basically lost the power of that message. He continues on, um, I own that, that was my mistake. My words, there you go. So what happened? I mean, he had some pretty strong statements about Trudeau, says that there's a special place in hell for someone who would obviously retaliate against nonsensical tariffs, right? Um, and now all of a sudden he's like, oh, I regret it, it's my mistake and my bad and I'm sorry. Yeah, someone, he, someone got to him and gave him a come to Jesus. You know who got talk. to him? Those corporations. <laughs> They're like, who do you think you are? Mess no, 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 you guys are messing with our profits right now. I mean, look, there are a lot of businesses in the United States that are gonna suffer from a trade war, especially with one of our uh, largest trade partners, Canada. So all it took was 24 hours for those corporate interests to, to get to Navarro and be like, listen, homie, time for you to change your tune. This is not responsible, this is not a good idea. It's so weird. I don't even understand the idea that Justin Trudeau is weak. Like that's they're saying, Justin Trudeau, you're being such a weakling. You're a weak leader. What are you talking about? He stood up to you. Yeah, I mean, just the internal logic doesn't make he sense. He stood up to politely, me. and Trump doesn't respond well to that. He right. doesn't. He doesn't. Yeah, he sees politeness as weakness. So that's what he was referring to. It was. It was Trudeau's tone. I mean, if if. I feel like if Trudeau did a press conference with guns blazing, I mean, that's when Trump might have a little more respect for him, which says a lot about who Trump is. The back, well, yeah. The background on Navarro is he is Trump's like number one like trade advisor. He wrote a book that made a documentary called like Death by China. So when you hear all these things like the Chinese, they're really screwing us. That's Peter Navarro talking. Mm -hmm. And he was a designated attack dog. That's why he was using such tough language. You saw him out there. He was clearly sent out there to speak on Trump's behalf. And, to, and it was sort of one of those, don't worry, boss, I got this. Yeah. And, he, and he really did speak. You know, whenever he, he used, you hear the president's name used with the middle initial, Donald J. Trump, you know that, you know, that, that this is a guy who was sent out there to do a job. Yeah, and he said, Trump said that you know, it cost a lot of money for the people of Canada. I just, I don't know, it's it's frustrating. And then at the same time, to call Justin Trudeau weak, mm -hmm. and regardless of what you think about like this North Korean summit, the conventional wisdom from the Republican Party leading into that was that talking to your enemies is weak. In the meantime, Trump has basically given Kim Jong-un what his family has wanted for yes. decades. Yes. The joke has me is like, why would we give Trump credit for this giant meeting? It is a meeting that, that the Kim Jong-un and Kim Jong-ils of the world have wanted for decades. It's like giving credit to Rachel for finally landing Ross. Like, no, <laughs> he's wanted you forever. <laughs> you finally just said yes. Yes. Everyone before you just said no, no, no. And that's the conventionally weak thing. It makes no sense to me. It yeah. is such a backwards thing. Not to mention all the like, I, like he, with his friends, he's being mean, and with his enemies, he's being nice. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, at the G7 summit, he uh, antagonized our long-standing allies. But then, while he was making friends with Kim Jong-un, he also further alienated us from other allies, including South Korea and Japan. You know, Shinzo Abe wanted to have some role in this summit, and Trump basically told him, you know, F off, like I'm not really interested in having you uh, participate in any of this. And then of course Trump blindsided South Korea by saying that he would uh, stop the military exercises uh, and also 
potentially pull US troops out of South Korea and bring them back to the United States. By the way, our own Pentagon wasn't notified of that. They were blindsided by that as well. So you're right. I mean, we're making all sorts of enemies with people that we shouldn't be enemies with and creating, I can't even say allies. North Korea will never be an ally. It is not a rational actor. They don't have our best interests at heart. They would never defend us if we got attacked. And so I think that you know when you look at the long game, this is all pretty disastrous on an inter international level. Right. Trump has agreed to less stringent accountability than other people have gotten North Korea to agree to. That's right. Like he has not accomplished as much as people who didn't go and sit down with Kim Jong Un, right, or Kim Jong Il. But the only thing he's done is given Kim Jong Un exactly what he wants, which is like less, be, less like getting rid of the, the military exercises and FaceTime with the president. Well, if it even comes to pass, I mean, Trump doesn't, he was looking for headlines, doesn't want to share the headlines with anyone. That's why he didn't want Abe involved. And that's why he didn't want many of these other world leaders involved. Whether or not, as Anna says, the Pentagon wasn't even aware of this stuff. He's making statements recklessly and just from the hip as he usually does. And whether or not there's actually any follow through remains to be seen. I mean, you know, his, his statements about who was going to be able to serve in the military, the, his statements on the trans community, I mean, they kind of just rolled their eyes in the military when he said that. It was right. uh, it's, so uh, we have yet to see what he's really agreed to. I think so far, all he's agreed to is a big photo op and a lot of ceremony. Two easy ways to follow Young Turks. One is hit the subscribe button down below, uh, then you're a TYT subscriber. And second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.